In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the River Tees. Uh, this is a video to talk about the changes along a river in terms of the characteristics. Uh, this is for the IGCSE Edexcel Geography Spec, uh, where I need to know how the characteristics change along a named river in terms of factors such as the channel shape, valley profile, um, discharge and sediment size. I've linked it here to show you where in the specification that is relevant. So a bit of context, the River Tees is in the northeast of England. It starts in the Pennines and ends up entering the North Sea uh, near Middlesbrough. We're now going to look at the different sections and see how the characteristics change um, depending on the course of the river. So in the upper course, we know that the river starts and this is where the source is. So this is the area of the source. It's an area called Crossvale. This is in the north of that Pennine mountain range. Um, it gets a lot of rainfall over 2,500 millimetres a year. It's very mountainous. Um, so this is an area that's very boggy and uplandy. And if you actually go to Crossvale, there's a marker which shows you where they say the source of the uh, River Tees actually starts. So this is an aerial shot nearby this, uh, the source of the River Tees. And we can see the characteristics of the river here um, from just looking at it. It shows us that there isn't a lot of discharge um, in the river. This means velocity would also be very, very low. And the, because at this point the river is very, very narrow, so it's less than two metres wide near the source, and it's going to be very shallow. At this point in this mountainous area, the gradient of the riverbed is going to be very steep. And because of that, um, um, along with that low discharge, the only type of erosion that's going to be dominant here is vertical erosion. So the river has the energy to erode down only. In terms of the sediment size, the sediment is going to be very, very large. Um, first of all, because this is a mountainous area, so those rocks would have kind of fallen into the river. But more importantly, there is very, very little erosion. Um, the energy doesn't, uh, river doesn't have the energy to erode in large quantities, and so there are large, large bits of rock and sediment in the riverbed. In terms of landforms and what the valley uh, profile looks like, we get something um, that looks like this in terms of V-shaped valleys. Because the vertical erosion dominates alongside with weathering processes like freeze fall happening on the sides, we get these very distinctive V-shaped valleys in the upper regions of the River Tees. Also, we get something called interlocking spurs. We've said there isn't a lot of discharge in the upper course, and therefore, um, when the river comes up against a bit of resistant rock, it actually can't um, go through it, so it goes round it, tries to find a less bit, a bit of resistant rock, and it keeps kind of skirting round these bits of res resistant rock, eroding in the um, less resistant rock in between, and therefore it leaves this these landforms called interlocking spurs and this is an example we would see in the upper course of the river Tees. Another upper course feature is we get waterfalls. This is where we get a difference in the resistance of rocks um, and there's examples here uh, cauldron snout um, waterfall and high waterfall are both waterfalls that you would find in the upper river Tees um, in the upper course. So in terms of characteristics, landform, source, V-shaped valley, interlocking spur, waterfalls, not um, a very deep or very wide river, low discharge, low velocity. The, the, the gradient of the bed is going to be quite steep and the, the sediment size is going to be large and we're, the valleys around us are going to be in this steep V-shape. So now we're going to have a look at the middle course and see how the characteristics change. By the time we get to um, the middle course, the tributaries have started to add more discharge to the main T. So the river Loon here is adding water here at this confluence. If I get more water in the river, that means it's got more energy and therefore it can start to erode uh, to the side or what we call lateral erosion, which eventually creates these bends in the river called meanders. The fact that the gradient of the riverbed is now much, much less steeper, um, and of course means that the, the water is not just eroding down, it's actually able to erode outside to the lateral erosion, therefore making these meanders bigger and bigger. An example of famous meanders in that kind of middle lower course region uh, would be at Yarm, which is where we can see here. And we can see that because the, the, the loops of the meander are quite tight, we're probably going to get oxbow lakes forming here in the, the couple of thousand years' time. 
Other the kind of characteristics changes, um, that added discharge obviously has made the river being able to erode outwards, therefore it's much, much wider, so the river can be as wide as 30 metres here, and it's going to be much deeper than it is in the upper course. And also we've got processes like abrasion and attrition that have been happening on that sediment all the way since the upper course, so any of the sediment in it is going to be um, a lot smaller and rounder than it was in the upper course. In terms of valley profile, um, the cross section will have, have, have therefore changed. In the upper course, we've got this V-shaped valley, very steep sides, but we've now got more of a U-shaped valley um, kind of cross profile, as we can see here on the right. Characteristics again, meanders are, going to, are the main landform, much wider and deeper, discharge is higher, velocity is much higher, the, the gradient of the bed has got shallower, um, and we've got much smaller sediment size because of that abrasion and attrition, and there, there is gentler valley sides, is more of a U-shape. Last uh, areas to talk about is the lower course. So the, the most obvious um, feature in the lower course is um, what we call the estuary. This is a uh, tease mouth, and this is where uh, the, the river Tees is actually entering uh, the North Sea, it's the mouth of the river. At this point in the river, uh, there's the highest amount of discharge, all those tributaries have added in over many, many, um, many, many miles. Uh, that means uh, the velocity is also going to be very, very high. This is because there is very, very little water actually touching the, the base of the the river and therefore there's very little friction and when there's very little friction that means things can move very quickly so when we've got lots of water that means it's always going to be very high velocity in the same way in the upper course where lots of that water was in contact with the river bed that means it moves much much slowly in, in terms of uh, it seems obvious here but it's also going to be the deepest and widest part lots of erosion has happened over a long period of time um, both laterally but also vertically and therefore the river can be as far uh, far wide as uh, a thousand meters at this point. When the, the river actually enters the sea um, that kind of energy that it had uh, concentrated actually spreads out and therefore when the energy when the water disperses it actually causes that velocity of the river to decrease so when it enters the, the, the sea um, this causes any of the, the huge amount of sediment it's been carrying to be deposited um, and therefore uh, we actually get these mud flats occurring and this is a mud flat we can see here after the tide has gone out um, and uh, this is, shows you that all that sediment that's been there is very very small it's been persistently eroded all the way down that river and so by the time we get to the mouth it's simply just sand and silt it's not going to be a very very large size. In terms of uh, the cross section of the valley, um, the, it's very very shallow, the gradient bed um, it's pretty much almost flat and the river cross section is very very flat and wide so we get an even more elongated U shape almost completely flat. Um, in some rivers you don't necessarily get this in the Tees but you would therefore get a flood plain occurring on either side of the river Tees. So just to sum up those characteristics, we've got an estuary and a mouth here. It's the widest and deepest in the lower course, the highest discharge and the highest velocity. The gradient of the riverbed is very flat. And because of that constant erosion, all that sediment has become a very small side. And the valley um, sides next to the river are very, very, very flat. Sometimes that can lead to floodplains and even the formation of levees in, in other rivers, but not so much happening here on the River Tees.